yeah, so that's a very important question because if you look at the evolution of our thought process, initially with the stem cell therapy, whether it's allogeneic stem cell or autologous stem cells, was primarily that it will lead to cardiogenesis, that the cells will actually go into the heart and graft into the heart and become an actively contractile cardiac tissue. But from the tagging studies we have learned over the years that these cells are actually there for a relatively short time and then they sort of migrate away. So new therapies have started coming up, new hypotheses. One of them suggested that maybe most of the effect is because of neovascular genesis, which is related to the VEGF and other neohormonal secretion uh, per se. But I think at this point, the concept is much broader. Uh, and then the two sort of theories which are out there, one is that the predominant effect is paracrine effect, uh, which is related to immunomodulatory or anti-inflammatory and other effects uh, that are beneficial. And then there is some suggestion also that maybe these secretions also activate the resident progenitor stem cells within the heart. So there's a lot of theories out there, but I think the most favored theory right now is that these are paracrine effect uh, based on all the immune modulatory and anti-inflammatory uh, substances which are secreted by these cells. If the theory that the paracrine is the primary pro uh, property through which the stem cells uh, have the beneficial effect, uh, then obviously it stands to reason that the higher the amount of paracrine uh, secretions, uh, neurohormonal secretions are uh, there with the cells, the better it is. And there is basic science literature that suggests that these uh, uh, mesenchymal stem cells which are grown under hypoxic condition, the so-called ischemia tolerant cells, uh, that they have a higher capacity to secrete paracrine factors and therefore theoretically at least uh, have a better chance of being beneficial. Yeah, well that's a huge uh, uh, topic. Obviously the cancer uh, patient survival has gotten better uh, and one of the things that they're, we're dealing with is more and more incidents of cardiovascular disease, left ventricular dysfunction and heart failure. Uh, and the challenges are many. So one is that a lot of patients uh, have the risk factors uh, uh, which are very common between cancer and cardiovascular disease. So they may have a lot of subclinical or clinical cardiovascular disease to begin with. And then the cancer chemotherapy may have direct effect uh, on cardiovascular disease development per se. Uh, so you take a group of patients at a higher risk and then you give therapies uh, that maybe are good for cancer but maybe increases the risk of developing cardiovascular disease. So your incidence prevalence uh, sort of goes up. Uh, the other problem is that the, these cancer therapies, there are a whole variety of different therapies that act from different mechanisms so that cardiovascular toxicities are different. It's not just one drug, one mechanism. So if you have to have prevention uh, maybe you will need different prevention uh, methods for these different chemotherapies. But the biggest question right now is how to develop standardized guidelines for the screening and surveillance of patients, when to act, when to stop the chemotherapy, what treatments to give. So I mean, this is a, a huge topic where we are really at the tip of the iceberg right now. Certainly the risk factors are pretty similar, uh, but we have decades worth of effort to screen and educate people for prevention of cardiovascular disease in general, uh, whereas there is no such uh, uh, focus on cancer patients right now. And obviously the fear of dying from cancer is so high that the focus primarily is in treatment of cancer and not prev uh, uh, preventing incident uh, cardiovascular disease in cancer patients. So I think the same principles that we have learned for prevention in general population, we really need to start thinking in those lines and apply on cancer patients also.